Have you ever had a really bad case of logorrhea? <laughs> Maybe when you get overexcited or you're feeling frustrated about something. Believe it or not, Jesus talked about it in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to get back to that a little bit later so you know what it is. <laughs> we have been in the Sermon on the Mount. It is a collection of Jesus' teachings his sort of his discipleship, his description of the kingdom of God. And we've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount since January. Uh, there's so much um, just amazing stuff in it that Jesus taught us about living and about the kingdom of God. And because it is so long, we've, we've divided up into just short sections. And right now we're in the section called Prayer Matters. It is, it is the teachings of Jesus about prayer. And that's a really good thing. That is the basis of our relationship with, with God, is being able to talk to him and, and hear from him, talk with him. But have, have you ever felt like your prayers are just sort of same old, same old? Like, you just always pray about the same things, or uh, you don't see the fruit of your prayer, or you're, you're just kind of going, like, I, I just there, I wish my prayers were more alive, more vibrant. Well, this, we're talking about some secrets secrets that Jesus openly taught us in the Sermon on the Mount. So we're, we're there, if you, will, if you will tune in, lean in today, you will hear another, just another way that Jesus talks about how to, to infuse life into your prayer and into your prayer life. So would you turn with me in the Bible? Yeah, hopefully you've got a Bible or on an app or something uh, to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Now, just to give us a little bit of context while you're, while you're looking for that, a couple weeks ago, Judith preached, and she taught from the first part of this chapter. So I'm going to kind of have a continuation uh, from what she started. She talked about living from the secret place of prayer. Remember that if you were here or if you watched it online? Jesus warned that your prayers, your prayer life, your, pray, your praying will be hindered interrupted, not as effective if you pray with some mindsets, uh, like, uh, for example, if you are praying to show off to others how, a go how good of a prayer you are or how holy you are, Jesus says that hinders your prayer. Like, God, God, that's not the kind of prayer that touches God's heart. Or if you repeat yourself over and over and over again, just sort of begging God, trying to twist God's arm to do what you want to do, Jesus said, that is not effective prayer. Uh, and there is a scientific name for repeating yourself over and over and over again, logaria. It means an excessive flow of words. Yes, or repetitious speech. And Jesus said, logoreic prayers are ineffective. <laughs> look it up, people. Look it up. So Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, he contrasts that kind of prayer that he said is ineffective with another kind of prayer that is effective. And he, 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 he demonstrates it, and he says, this is what effective prayer is like. It's short and to the point, and it honors God. If you could just boil it right down, if you want to have an effective, uh, vibrant prayer life, short and to the point, don't be just trying to show off with your prayer or using you know, fancy language or something like that. That's not the prayer that touches God's heart. Get to the point and honor God first. You do that, man, you are on your way. Uh, and so uh, in Matthew 6, 9, Jesus says, pray like this. Pray like this. So if you, if you, if you thought, man, I wish my prayers were better, let's start with Jesus and what he said. He said, pray like this. So he was saying, let me show you how. Uh, here's the flavor of prayer that pleases God the Father. And then what did Jesus say next? He gave us the Lord's Prayer, all right? Now, we're, so we're in Matthew, and that's where the full Sermon on the Mount is found, but in, the, in one of the other Gospels written by Luke, Luke also wrote an account of Jesus' ministry, and when he talked about, when he introduced the Lord's Prayer, he gave us a little bit of context, but we don't get in Matthew. He says that Jesus had been praying, 
there was, you know, disciples around and crowds around, different things. And Jesus had been praying. And one of Jesus' disciples goes up to Jesus after that. He's like, man, I saw you praying. Would you teach us to pray? And that was the introduction to the Lord's Prayer. He said, would you teach us to pray just like John the Baptist taught his followers, his disciples how to pray. Jesus, would you teach us to pray? In other words, give us a prayer. Give us a prayer. And so in, in Luke 11, 2, uh, in, uh, I'm going to read this from the ESV, the e uh, English Standard Version. It's a very literal translation. But in most translations, Jesus' answer is this. When you pray, say. In the NLT, it just says again, like Matthew, pray like this. But more literally, Jesus said, when you pray, say. And then Jesus gives us the Lord's Prayer. So it is a very ancient tradition in prayer to start with a memorized prayer and then springboard off of that and bring your own petitions to God. So like a biblical prayer or something like that. Start there. And then add your own personal request. So there's, we see these two, just that couple little words just kind of make us see the Lord's Prayer a little bit differently. We see Luke so, where, with Jesus saying, pray this way, say this, S just say this. And we see Matthew saying, pray like this. So there, uh, and both are the Word of God. So this is what I see. Two great ways to use the Lord's Prayer. Memorize it and say it. Just say it. And the second way, pray in that flavor. Pray about those same kinds of things, worship and honoring God and forgiveness and relationships and holiness, all that stuff. Pray about that stuff. The Lord's Prayer is what we call it, but really, you've probably heard this, it's really the disciples' prayer. Because Jesus said, my disciples, my followers, pray like this. So really, it was the prayer that the Lord gave to his disciples. Here, use this. Pray this way. Talk this way to God. Uh, the, the, the Lord's Prayer is it's be, because it's been uh, it was started by Jesus. Jesus brought it. So for 2,000 years, the church has been praying through the Lord's Prayer. And I, I had, a couple years ago, during our annual time of prayer and fasting, I had, I had read a book on prayer, and I had uh, just read about some of the great reformers of the faith, like people like Martin Luther, you might have heard of him. He, he and others, they really focused on the Lord's Prayer in their prayer. They prayed for hours a day, but they would launch from the Lord's Prayer. That was kind of the starting point. And Luther said, every time I pray... I use the Lord's Prayer, and I paraphrase from it. I ad lib from it. That's, uh, that's what he said. I'm kind of paraphrasing his words. But he said, I, I take that as a starting point, and I don't just say, um, may your will be done. I say, in my life. And like uh, what, what I, that, it so inspired me, it changed my prayers. So like for the past few years, I have been using the Lord's Prayer uh, uh, very frequently, not necessarily every time I pray, but uh, very frequently, m multiple times a week. And so it'd be, instead of just saying, thy will be done, we say, Lord, your will be done in my wife's knees who I'm praying for. Your will be done there. Your kingdom come there. Do you see what I mean? Like I'm taking that as a starting point, but I'm bringing my request to God, my world to God, and I'm saying, hey, not just thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I'm saying, Lord, in, in this situation, that I am calling out to you for prayer. Your will be done in that. Let us see your kingdom come in that. In VBS, Lord, may your kingdom come in VBS. May your will be done in kids' lives through VBS. May your, ki your kingdom come in the workers' lives in VBS. Come, be done. You see what I mean? We're using the Lord's Prayer as a launching point to pray about the things that God says are effective, yeah. that God values. And so Pastor Christian taught us last week from this same chapter, from Matthew 6, to start from a place of submission to God and to start from a place of recognizing God's character. Start there. Yeah. And we sometimes forget that. One of the reasons our prayers are same-o, same-o is because we just bow down and we say, Lord, would you please heal my this? Would you please provide this? Would you? And it's just bam, 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 down through the shopping list. And that, then we go, that is boring, man. That is boring. Start from a place of your focus is on God. 
God, you are love. You desire my best. You are my father. Uh, Ever since our our connect groups talked about the names of God earlier this spring, I have just been using that name, Abba Father, and just talking to God as my Abba, my Abba. It just changed the way I pray. Like that one connect group session changed my life, changed my, and it revitalizes my prayer. My prayers don't feel same old, same old because I'm I'm in church, I'm learning, I'm reading the Bible, I'm reading about prayer, and and I am, there is life that comes in when I see all the richness that is available available in prayer. It's not just quick three minutes, here's my, here's my list, God. Man, it's an opportunity to like be with God and partake and partner with him. And what do you want? Oh, yeah, I'll pray about that. Great. Like that, that all of a sudden, your prayer life can come alive. And that's what we want. So in Matthew 6, starting at verse 9 to 10, um, Jesus gives us this, the Lord's Prayer. And he says, start this way, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you pray, start from a place of submission to God. Your God, I'm not. You're great. You're always love. I'm sometimes loving. You are love. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're God, I'm not. We start there, and all of a sudden, it just changes your praying because you realize you're not just talking to a buddy. God is your friend, but he is not your buddy. I'm sorry. He, and Pastor Christian talked about that last week. He is God. He is almighty, creator of all, who is also your friend. <laughs> he is both. He is both. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, but he is also God. And that's why it's so comforting to pray to him and to talk to him because he can do stuff you and I cannot. That is so awesome. And he loves you and he cares for you and he's all-powerful and he wants to do things in your life. So we focus, we start by focusing on God. We haven't even gotten to prayer requests yet. Only the things that we have just prayed for, we have asked for some stuff, but it wasn't on my list. It was on God's list. Do you see the difference? So I'm actually asking, uh, I'm not saying God necessarily, uh, uh, although I do, I do kind of expand this. I, I say, God, may your name be kept holy in my family. May your name be kept holy in my speech. May, like in my talking day to day, may your name be kept holy in my attitude. I, I do pray that way. I think that's a great springboard. But it, the prayer is, may you glorify your name. May you make sure that your name is kept holy. I'm asking God that his name would be kept holy. Like, wow. So I'm not even praying about my thing. I'm praying about God's things. Wow, what a powerful, life-infusing thing for your prayers. But Jesus said there's even more than that. One time someone asked him, what's the most important thing? Jesus said, love God, but I can't stop there. Jesus said, and love people. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's very important to Jesus. So in Jesus' mind, true devotion is loving God and loving others as yourself. That is what Jesus would call is a devoted life. That is devotions in his mind. So that ought to impact your prayers and my prayers. Prayer is about praying for God's glory and praying for blessings for others. Already, I may have blown your mind when it comes to prayer. It's so much more than your 17 things that you need. And the reason I am saying that so boldly is because of my own awakening in prayer a few years back where I realized that's all I prayed about, my 17 things, over and over and over and over and over again. And I was going, why is there no life in my prayers? Because God said, pray about him and pray about others and bring your needs. There's so much more to prayer. So Jesus says, okay, prayer, that's start with God, but don't, 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 don't stop there. There's more to pray about. There's additional to pray for. So verse 11, he taught us to pray, give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. So when you pray that God would forgive your sins, according to Jesus' pattern, you get the kind of forgiveness you've given. So earlier we received communion today and we said, Lord, forgive us of our sins. 
what if God only forgave your sins, whatever sin that was this past week, the way you've forgiven others? So if you're holding something against someone else, God says, well, I guess you want me to hold it against you then. <gasps> Yikes! Wow! Oh my goodness, the Lord's Prayer begins to come alive. As we realize, okay, this stuff is real, you guys. This isn't just churchy stuff. Yawn, that was nice. What's for lunch? This is like your life. This is your Christian life that we're learning about today. It's so important. In verse 13, he says, And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Wow. I'm telling you what. I have got about five specific people in my life that every single day I pray this. And don't let blank, 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 my, this friend, this friend, this friend, don't, and, and Garen, don't let us yield to temptation, Lord, but rescue us from the evil one. Like, I'm specifically praying this phrase from the Lord's Prayer every day. Even if I don't do the whole Lord's Prayer every day, every day I pray this for me and my friends. Wow, it's so powerful. So Jesus is showing us in prayer that if you love God, then you will earnestly desire for his name to be honored, for his kingdom to come, for his will to be done, because you love him so much. I just want that. I yearn for that. I pray for that, Lord. May your kingdom come. I want that because I love you. And if you love others, you earnestly desire that they would have good relationships, that they would find forgiveness, that they would be forgiving, that they would not yield to temptation. All these things that he taught us to pray for, that their needs would be met, our daily needs. So today we're going to focus in on just one little verse. I've been kind of doing some general here, but one verse, verse 11. Give us today the food we need. Give us today the food we need. In the ESV, again, it's a little bit more trans, a literal translation, and it is, in most translations, it says this way, give us this day our daily bread. One of the things I've done, I've memorized the, the Lord's Prayer in King James, in the NIV, in the NLT. NLT is what we preach from, so I, I, I usually quote it in that. But I've also been working on my Spanish, which I love. I just love the Spanish language. I want to consume it. I want to speak it. I've been listening to Spanish worship music, and I, I found myself the other day being able, able to actually pray in Spanish from my heart, because, just because of the things I've been learning. It's just, it, to me, it's, it's, it's a passion of mine. It's refreshing to me. Yeah. So this verse, danos hoy el alimento que necesitamos. Oh, I just love it. Oh, so beautiful. Give us, yeah, yeah. Give us this day our daily bread. Oh, so beautiful. This is a prayer that God will meet our needs each day. I think it's not just about give me a sandwich. It's not so much. It's a little broader than that. Give us what we need today, God, to get through this day. Give, give us what we need to survive and thrive today, each day. And it implies trust in God. You wouldn't pray that if you didn't trust in him. So Jesus is, is kind of, a, he's assuming you put your trust in God, and that's why you would ask him for, to, to fulfill your daily needs. It also implies that you believe that God is good, that he's loving, that he has the ability to do it, that he is all-powerful, and that he wants to meet your, your needs. But it also reminds you to pray for others' needs. From this point on in the Lord's Prayer, from, from verse 11 to the end there, it's all us. There, is no, there are no pray, uh, me, there's no forgive me, there's no meet my needs. It is, it's all us, 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 us. Give us today our daily bread. So in this, it, it implies trust for God, but it implies that you, you're going to be caring for others, that you love them so much that you would pray for them. Do you see how this could infuse life into your prayer? Yeah. It's, it's so much bigger. Yes, we're going to bring our own stuff, but there is, there's more. In Mark's account of Jesus' ministry in chapter 6, there was a time when Jesus and the disciples were just swamped with people. And all the issues, they were, they were bringing their problems to Jesus. And so their, their, their needs and everything, they were just swamped with people. So much so that they did not have time to eat Kind of interesting, we're kind of in an eating 
verse today. Give us today our daily bread. We had communion today. It's kind of interesting, kind of cool. And so Jesus said, man, we, we got to get away. So let's just get away, Jesus said to his, to his 12 disciples. Let's get away. Let's, let's rest and let's eat. So they boarded a ferry boat from downtown. They headed to Blake Island where there are no hotels or convention centers, only a cafe and a campground. Okay, so they're just heading there to get away. But the crowds got wind of it. They got in some speedboats and got there ahead of Jesus. And so when Jesus gets there, he was planning to go and just, let's just have a retreat and eat and sleep. He gets there. All these people are in need. He starts pouring out his heart. He starts teaching them, healing them, delivering them, all this stuff. But the problem is the disciples are hangry. You know hangry? Combination between angry and hungry. Yes, they were hangry. So in Mark 6.35, it, it says, Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Okay, I'm throwing my attitude in. I feel like, I feel like they had some sass. Verse 36, send the crowds away. Can you imagine saying to Jesus, that, what is prayer? Prayer is talking with God. So the disciples are praying, and this is their prayer. Send the crowds away. That's their prayer. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they asked, hand on hip. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. Here's the thing. They did not want to be bothered by them. They had their own needs. But Jesus said, I want to supply their needs through you. You feed them. That didn't even occur to them that there was more. What do they do? Wine. We'd have to work for months, and we don't want to do that. The only two options that they could come up with for getting food for all these thousands of people that had come for Jesus' teaching, two, two options they came up with. Send the crowd to the grocery store, or all the disciples have to get an extra job work for months, and then go to the store ourselves and get all the food and feed all these people, and we don't want to do that. You can, you can imagine the kind of the hangry thing going on there. Their frame of reference was, it's all up to us. Meeting needs, it's all, it's, it's all up to us. They didn't even consider that God meets needs. They didn't even consider that Jesus might want to do something else other than what they were thinking. How, they, they didn't even think, consider how did Jesus want to meet the need or see the kingdom of God come or be done, his will be done through a situation. So Jesus told them to bring the little bit of, of bread and fish that they had. Bring it here to me. Verse 41, Jesus took the five loaves, two fish. He looked up toward heaven and he blessed them. Oh, wow. Little with God's blessing. Wow. Then he began breaking the loaves into pieces. And listen to this, the way this is phrased. I love this. He kept giving the bread to the disciples. So, somebody say, so. Why did he keep giving the bread? So they could distribute it to the people. He also divided up the fish for, somebody say, for everyone to share. That was what was in his mind. If the disciples had prayed a prayer like we sometimes do, they might have prayed a prayer like this, Lord, I have a need. Lord, I am hangry. So, Lord, please remove this crowd far from me. Doesn't that sound like our prayer? But Jesus had a bigger purpose than just feeding 12 hangry disciples. Prayer is an opportunity for you to see what God's purpose is. What is his mission in this situation? What, what does he want through this? Prayer, prayer is an opportunity for you to experience the love of God, for you to, to experience the power of God, the provision of God, the care of God for you and for others. A couple years ago, I was at a, a friend's house for dinner, and I will never forget the way he prayed before, before the meal. Typically, we pray before a meal. We say, Lord, thank you for this food. He said, Lord, we're thankful that we have this food here, but we remember that there are people around the world, they don't have enough bread tonight. And so, Lord, we pray for them that they would have enough to eat. Provide for them, Lord. And that simple grace, we call it, saying prayer before food, 
that affected me so much. I still remember that stuck with me. World Vision has a child nutrition fund. And if you give to that because of public grants, it will be multiplied three times. And we gave, to, Shelley and I gave to World Vision. We gave to that this past week to the, the Child Nutrition Fund. And you know what? The, the, the uh, people in poor, in poor nations where they are receiving rations to keep their kids alive, they call those meals miracle food. Man, wouldn't you want to be a part of miracle food for somebody else? What a cool, awesome thing. Jesus kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute, and he divided up the fish so everyone could share. It just reminds me of Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. What does God want to do in the situation that you're going through? That thing that you keep praying about? Maybe, maybe it's a thing in your life. Great. Absolutely. Yes, you should bring your, your needs to God in prayer. But what does God want to do that through that? What, does he, what is his mission through this situation you're going through? Maybe he wants to change your heart so you, you say, Lord, I'm giving you this, my need for healing, but if you, what you really want to do is my heart, then heal my heart, Lord. Make me like you. I'm giving you my need for a job, but if what you really want me to do is to be a witness to some recruiters, send the recruiters my way, even if they don't give me a job, because I'm going to do your will and trust you for the daily bread. You see what a difference it would make in your prayer and in your life? Just springing board, springing from Jesus' pattern for prayer. Pray, Father, glorify your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. If I have needs, others do too. So, Lord, how do you want to meet those needs through me? How do you want to meet the, meet the needs for my family? How can, how can your kingdom come to my city, my church, our world? Wow, that would revolutionize your prayer life. Here's the bottom line of this message. Prayer is an opportunity for you to partner with God in his mission. Prayer is an opportunity for you to partner with God. Can you imagine Almighty God wants to partner with you? That's so cool. That's so exhilarating. And prayer is an opportunity for you to partner with God in his mission. Find out what is his will in, that, in this situation in your life. Would you stand to your feet? And if you're online, we're going to go to a time of prayer. Would you join us? And let's make this, a, let's make this a, pr- a time of prayer. Let's respond to this message on prayer by praying. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, many of us stand in need today, individually. We, we need healing. We need provision. We need deliverance. We, we need freedom. We, we need you And Lord, I thank you that you are reminding us that you want to supply our daily needs. You taught us to pray. Give us today our daily food, our daily bread, our daily needs. And if you have some needs in some area of your life, I know we did this earlier, but just one more time as a response, would you raise your hand? You have some need that you're praying about in your life. I do. Yeah, many of us do. Okay, you can put your hands down. That's okay. Lord, would you meet those needs? Would you supply in a way that glorifies you and honors you and that brings your kingdom in my life and in our lives in those areas? So not just healing so that we recover, but healing so that you are glorified. Not just a job so that my needs are met, but a job so that you'd be glorified. Lord, would you meet those needs in our lives? Now, Lord, we think... And I just want to challenge you. We're going to stay in prayer. Think about a prayer request of yours. Now let's expand that and pray for others who have that same need. Okay, go. Just in your own words, talking to God. Maybe you need healing. Pray for someone who needs healing, etc. So Lord, we don't just pray, give me today my daily bread, but we pray, give us today 
the food we need. Give us the things we need today. And now, Lord, one more thing. We ask you, how do you want to meet those needs through me, through us? What opportunity are you presenting for the kingdom of God, for me to participate? For, and by, when I say me, I'm praying for all of us, for us to participate in the kingdom of God. What you got for us, Lord? What you got for us? Sign me up. In Jesus' name, one final invitation. Maybe you haven't yet given your life to Jesus. And I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. He will change your life. He will forgive your sins. We are all born into sin, so we all need to be forgiven and saved. We all need a Savior. I want to invite you to, to trust Jesus, to put your faith in him, to be, actually become his apprentice, to learn from him, follow him, do his works, and partner with him. How do you do that? Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. Do you want to do that today, online or right here in the room? With, with your heads bowed, if you would like to put your faith and trust in Jesus right now, Christians all around you are praying for you right now. If you would like to do that today, would you raise your hand? You raise your hand and you say, I would like to become a Christian. I would like to put my faith in Jesus. Yes. And Lord, for all those who are putting their faith in Jesus today, Lord, we just pray that you would come in, that you would save them, you would forgive them of their sins and make them new and help them to follow you, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to more and more every week reach out to others who need to put their faith in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you put your faith in Jesus today, we just say welcome to the kingdom of God. And would you just let us know that you put your faith in Jesus? If you just prayed that prayer with me just now, would you text the word restart because you're restarting your life to the phone number 97,000? And that will just let us know. And I'll, I'll just send you back a little bit of encouragement. God bless you. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Garen. Isn't it, isn't it so great that God wants to partner with us to make his kingdom come, to be able to provide for the needs of others? Amen. Well, you know, it's so good to see you this week. And um, if you're joining us online, would you just subscribe to our channel uh, just so other people can get to know us and can hear God's word through you, through, through us. Um, and if you're new with us today, would you just text greet, the word greet, to 97,000. That's just a way for us to connect with you. Give us a little bit of information so that we can connect. We can w walk this out, walk your faith out with you. Well, we love you guys. We'll see you next week. It's going to be great. God bless you.